I never having experienced. So I feel grateful when I can say that I, Benjamin Roy, at the age of 42 years old, Anno Domini, had one of those experiences when I was in the mountains and I witnessed a semi truck slam into one of those runaway truck ramps <laughs> firsthand. And it was the greatest fucking moment of my entire life. Some of you didn't applaud at that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you seen it before? <laughs> For those out in TV land, if you don't know what we're talking about, dotted along thousands of miles of pristine Colorado highways are these sand trenches dug up into hillsides. For truckers, whose brakes have inevitably overheated from traversing dozens of spiraling, traffic-filled roadways to just haphazardly slam their truck into. <laughs> it is the most beautiful confluence of modern automotive technology, and we're all out of fucking ideas here. <laughs> That was their best idea. <laughs> like, what other ideas? Like, the trucking companies were like, what were we supposed to do? Not dig a sand trench? <laughs> what were we supposed to do? Go to these truck manufacturers and say, manufacture your trucks and your, and your automotives with a set of brakes that are capable of handling the load they're saddled with so as to keep our blue collar and union workers safe out there on the road? <laughs> Oh, fuck off, no. Because no. what would that tell them, that we care about their lives? No, here's what we're gonna do. What we did was, this wasn't our first idea, okay? I want you to understand that. Okay, now first of all, we had thought about putting a giant slingshot at the bottom of the hill there. For when the truck is out of control to slam in that giant rubber band and it would extend all the way up to the end and then it would fire them straight back up the hill. And we'd do some mathematics, of course, and it would, uh, it would time out to land them straight in the cargo bay of a Brakes Plus, but the, um, <laughs> but the migratory elk, their antlers kept getting caught uh, inside the band and the libtards had a field day with us on that one. So, so then we went to the idea of putting hundreds and thousands of bottle rockets taped to the front end of this. <laughs> And so when the brakes went out, the driver would get out with an acetylene torch and he would get on the hood and he'd start lighting the wicks. Of course, they're pointed in the opposite direction and it would create enough drag to slow him down. But the uh, wicks uh, kept getting wet in the inclement Colorado weather. So we had to trash that one. And then we were fresh out of ideas at that point. So we opened it up to kindergarten children from around <laughs> the United States. And it was uh, little Tommy Jenkins from Hogbone, Memphis area of Tennessee. And he drew this drawing of a, of a flaming rectangle just uh, careening into a sandbox here, and we thought that was a pretty good idea. So we did it pretty much to spec. Of course, we could not find a 40-foot calico cat, so uh, that did not happen. He drew that in there, but that, that didn't make it into the specs. <laughs> it was the greatest thing I'd ever seen. I'm not joking, I watched it happen. We were driving things by us, and let me just say, runaway truck ramp, is adorable for what I witnessed. That's not a good name. That makes it sound like the truck has a painted on beard and a fake cigar and a stick with a bindle and it's heading out on its own, right? Doesn't want to live with its stepfather Todd anymore or whatever. That's what it feels like. No, what I witnessed was so much more violent. I mean, they call it a runaway truck ramp because you can't call it what it really is, which is a careening GED coffin. That's what it is. Just a man with a, an equivalent to a high school diploma screaming in a butter compartment as he flies down a hill. He was just like... And you can't hear him because he's behind glass and he's like... And he's going and he slammed into it and I watched it happen. And see, I thought that my reaction was appropriate because I'd never seen this before. But my wife at the time called it deeply unsettling. Because <laughs> this thing hit the sand and I was like, pull over! Pull the fucking car over! I wanna look at it! Pull over, I wanna look at it! She 
pulled the car over and I was like, holy fuck! And she was like, was that necessary? And I was like, no, you're hard! I get fear boners. I was just like, oh my God, oh my God. It was so cool, he just like, I, like she looked over and she's like, are you crying? And I was like, what? She's like, you didn't even cry at your grandmother's funeral. And I was like, well, my grandmother didn't die by careening into 300 feet of viscous sand. Because if she had, maybe I could have squeezed a couple salty ones out for her. But how did Nana die? She fucking gave up. That's how she fucking died. Did that man give up? No. He saw it all the way through and he's alone. Well, he's not technically alone. He had a sleeper cab, which means there's probably a sex worker in the back. But you all know that once the semi truck stops and you have no more electricity, you can't support the life of a sex worker anymore. So the driver has to haul up onto the top of the roof and lean over the top and open the door and be like, you go on, you get. And he has to, he releases that sex worker into the Colorado Highlands. <laughs> you know that, um, don't you shake your fucking head at me. Don't you do that. You know, y'all, Ancient Ute legend says that sex workers released from the cabs of giant semi-trucks into the Colorado wilderness? That's where wolves come from. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Weirdest crowd. <laughs> It was the coolest shit I've ever seen, and I just, I can't, I can't even, I, I had so much fun. You should be able to camp, you know what I mean? You should be able to camp at the base of these runaway truck ramps and just fucking wait. You and your family, roasting marshmallows. Ah, here comes a big Walmart fucker. He's smoking. God damn it. It's the new whale watching. It's white trash whale watching. It's so good. I love this so much. And the best, the best part is, the best part is when he was done, the driver didn't do anything. He just got out of his truck and he just stood there and smoked a cigarette. And I was like, what, what a wasted opportunity. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just feels like a, a wasted opportunity. It feels, you know what it feels like? I've always thought that at the top of one of those runaway truck ramps, there should just be a nice bench. <laughs> for subtle reflection. The driver just climbs out of his truck and gets to the top of the hill and just has a fucking seat. <laughs> and then he looks down beside him and there's a, a binder with plastic on it to survive the weather. And on the outside of that plastic binder, it says, so you wanted to be a truck driver, did you? <laughs> And then when he opens up the binder, there's just dozens of brochures to reasonably priced trade schools and community <laughs> colleges. Hmm. Johnson and Wales. I always did love to watch my Nana's hands while she cooked. 